What is that dazzling goodness? <laughs> hey guys, it's Tacoma Comics here. That is Dazzler 27, and normally I wouldn't pick this up at all. There's two reasons I grabbed a hold of that. First, it was 50 cents. All the comics in this stack right here were 50 cents at Stargazer Comics in Tacoma. They had a big uh, holiday sale on the 30th and 31st. I, I hit them up both days, actually. First day I was in with my kids, and they were like, can we go now? You've been looking through those bins for an hour. So I said, sure. Went back the next day. Second reason I picked this up, man, is I was just looking at it. going to move that glare for a second. I was looking at it, and I'm like, that looks like a Bill Sankovich cover. And I don't know if you can see this, but right down in the bottom corner here, that's BS for Bill Sankovich. I opened it up, and indeed, this is a Bill Sankovich cover. Uh, Dazzler 27, 60 cents. That's how I know. That's that's when I started collecting comics is when they were 60 cents in the mid and early 80s. So definitely around the time, but I wasn't into Dazzler. However, I was into the X-Men. So Dazzler versus the X-Men, issue number 38. Pick that up. It's what I call a nostalgia read. Just something I'm going to get because <laughs> I remember it and I read everything X-Men. Moonstruck. Never uh, read this before, but I love Grace Ellis and the work she did on Lumberjanes. And, uh... You know, 50 cents, image number one. It's a really cute comic, real quirky. Uh, give it a read if you got uh, if you got any interest in animals and coffee and bands and just uh, anthropomorphic goodness. The Ruins. If you've read The Marvels, you've heard me talk about The Marvels, you know, uh, totally into that series. Wow, the glare on this one is really crazy. Uh, Marvels is really cool. Right after The Marvels is done, Warren Ellis got a shot at uh, writing something similar. The Ruins, this is the same guy from the Marvels, the photographer going around and something crazy bad has happened to the world and so all the superheroes and he's trying to figure out what and he's doing like a little bit of detective work trying to write a book and he's getting stopped at every corner and uh, at one point he gets beat up by this this uh, Nick Fury guy and who's kind of dying and all the characters are dying or wasting away or mutated it's it's sick and it's twisted and it's just good and for 50 cents i'll read it all day kim and kim number one uh magdalene visaggio really great writer love the stuff she's doing and uh like kim and kim number one there look at that cover that's such an awesome cover i love that cover man x factor 13 a little gene gray action right there that's amazing so i'll pick that up i said all day for 50 cents I'll get any X Factor for 50 cents. There's number four. Nothing special about this except uh, it was there. If you've not been reading Motor Girl, I highly suggest you jump on this. This is an amazing series. I'd never read Terry Moore before, but uh, I picked up Motor Girl. I've got one through nine. I haven't read the last issue yet. I don't want it to end, but i uh, really been loving it so far. So pick these up, 50 cents, number three and number four. Kind of hard story to um, explain. The gorilla is her, um, she's got PTSD from some really sick stuff that's happened to her in, in Iraq. Uh, she was a soldier, and the gorilla is like her safety blanket almost, an imaginary friend that, that just helps comfort her and helps keep her sane and protected, um, looks out for her. And she works in this junkyard and lives in a house owned by this old lady. And the government's trying to take over the house because aliens have landed. Aliens are actually good, not bad. And all sorts of craziness going on, but uh, just just amazing artwork, an amazing story. Um, really, really beautifully done. This cover is just beautiful. This is a really cruddy cover, a lot of spine ticks, but I'll take it for 50 cents. And I'll take any shirtless bear fighter cover <laughs> if you want to just have fun. Read Shirtless Bear Fighter, five-issue uh, little miniseries, just fun stuff. I mean, it is exactly what it says. It's about a guy who may have been birthed by a bear and a human uh, <laughs> coming together of animal and, and human beings. And he uh, has lived in the woods on his own, but he comes out to fight bears every once in a while without a shirt on. That's about all there is to it. Grass Kings, I'm having a love-not-love -love relationship with this book, but I uh, picked up a few extra copies in number four and five. Some of it's really good, but some of it doesn't quite grab me, so... I go back and forth in that. Like I said, 50 cents is a great motivator to buy some books. Did not need any motivation for this next set. Eleanor and the Egret. Um, this is number five. I didn't actually have number five. I'd gotten uh, 
I had gotten the first four and read them and loved them and somehow I missed number five. So got myself a full set now. This is by John Lehman from Chu. And this is another one. How do I explain this? A woman who is an artist who has a pet egret um, is stealing paintings because the woman who's making the paintings or owns the paintings is an evil person from way back when in time and had stolen work that the lady had done. And there is a French detective in there and there's heists going on and battles. And I believe that's the best I can describe it because you just got to read it. It is some crazy cool stuff. So Eleanor and the Egret really suggest you pick that up, especially if you can get them for 50 cents. I Hate Image, Scotty Young. I've got one copy of this. figure I'd pick up another one for 50 cents. Wicked and Divine. Um, this is, what, 31, I think? And then 32 on the other side. Did I get that right? Yeah, no, this is 31. The other one's 32. 32 is kind of a seminal issue in this series. I click this series mainly in trade, but I do get some some single issues. Uh, 32 is an awesome issue, and I only have it in a variant cover, so I was really excited to get the regular cover for 50 cents. And then, because I'm falling in love with the stuff Terry Moore is doing on Motor Girl, I figured I'd go back and read some of his earlier series, Stranger in Paradise. He got four and five. I thought that was a really cool cover. And seven and eight. And again, these were all 50 cents each. I thought these were all really cool covers. All right, just bear with me for a second here, guys. Because we got lots of comics to move about and shuffle in limited space. This next stack were all of Buck each. And start off with, before it falls over, there's Descender 21 and 22, both variant covers. I'm not sure about this one, but um, you know, it's got Lemire's signature on it. Not like a real signature, you know, it's artist signature. Um, but this one, I can definitely tell that's, that's Lemire's style. So I think they were both done by Lemire. I'm filling in some Dr. Afra, number 12. I got some coming up later. Jeff Ramirez, Lemire's Royal City. I don't know what you guys think about this one. I mean, it's really well written, but sometimes it's so slowly paced that I'm just not even into it. Uh, but I love the variant covers with the homages to 90s bands. This is obviously Nirvana. There's a whole um, homage variant for Royal City number 8, I think. That's really cool. I want to get... Tokyo Ghost. What can you say about Rick Remender? I mean, Deadly Class, Black Science, Low. The guy is just a seven to eternity, the force of nature. I never read Tokyo Ghost, but I'll pick up a number one for a dollar any day. Uh, some more Wicked and Divine. I think this was a special one-shot issue called 455 AD. Outcast 31. I read this series, but I, I missed this one, so I was happy to get that. If you have not read The Few, get on it. I've got issue one somewhere. And I just found these extra issues. This is three and four. And I got another copy of number one somewhere. Hopefully it's in this pile. Dr. Afra. told you there's some more Afra in there. There's nine. And I think we've got the annual number one. Hey, look, it's me picking up more Miss Marvel. There's the uh, couple of Civil War II tie-ins. Dollar each. I'll grab those. And look at this. Paper Girls. I cannot believe I found this for a dollar. This is... Uh, Great series. I mean, high print run for any Brian K. Vaughn number one. So it's not like, wow, you're going to be making super money on that. But still a dollar. I'll take it. I never finished Rucker's run on Wonder Woman. I don't know why. I think I just got disenchanted when I found out he was leaving it. So um, I missed 24 and 25. But those are the last two uh, issues that Rucker did. So I got those now. Talking about Rosenberg in an earlier video. Here is... Uh, Varying addition to uh, his Civil War II Kingpin series. Um, little homage to, I think that's the, the movie poster for Shaft, if I'm not mistaken. So I thought it was really cool. There's the few number one. So great series, really fun series. I uh, wish it was doing better, more, more well known. I hope it's not discontinued. Little Darth Maul uh, 40th anniversary Star Wars variant. You know, I'm a sucker for anything original trilogy. And then look at this other one I got for a dollar. Before you freak out, it's a second printing, but still. Little Mary Jane Iron Spider. I was excited to grab that. You know, I just, uh, I think that's a cool cover because she's smiling, but there's a little bit of evilness going on behind that smile. Is this something else happening there? So that was some great artwork. It wasn't, wasn't too straightforward. It wasn't just a pretty cover. It's a little bit more than that. All right. 
Finally, moving up the ladder, there were a few books at this uh, shop that were not a dollar each that I decided to pick up because they were still really darn cheap. Don't know anything about Ash versus the Army of Darkness, except that it's supposed to be really cool and a lot of people like it. And for a buck fifty, I'll pick up a sketch cover of uh, Number Zero. Betty Page, number one, dollar fifty. I always think this is um, this is not a shirt, but this, this is guy's hair, and that he's just a really skeevy looking guy. But it's not quite that bad <laughs> when I just look at the cover. Picked up some more Astro City, number ten and number eleven. Some issues I don't have. And then here's the Marvels I was talking about. Price tag says four bucks, but it's actually half off, so it was two dollars. That's number one. That's number two, so now I've got one through four, plus that book zero, plus that ruins um, book. X-Factor number one for $2.50. Gotta love that. It's in really nice shape, too. I mean, some yellow pages. It's not, like, amazing, but, you know, the cover's nice. It presents well, as they say. And then here we go. These are the big ones that I got. And, again, great prices, can't argue. Uncanny X-Men 211, $4.50. 212, which I believe is the, the first Psylocke or the first appearance of Betsy Braddock in an X-Men comic. She obviously was captain in a Captain Britain comic way early in her career. And then 213 for four bucks. This is the first appearance of her as Psylocke. Really great Wolverine and Sabretooth battle going on here. And then the shop was cool enough to give me a freebie, a little Marvel Legacy variant. So shout out to Stargazer for that. That was just because I spent so much money in their shop. And then finally, while I was looking through all the comic bins, my boys were like, Daddy, did you see the toys? No, I didn't see the toys. But there is uh, Miss Marvel Legends figure. I'll put that up right in a second. Let's move these comics over. Miss Marvel Legends figure. Uh, these are going for about $22. They're not discounted or on sale anywhere yet. Most stores I saw were still selling them for this much. Only thing wrong with this is that little crease right along the back going right through her face so it's not a perfect mint box but uh unopened nice figure it got that little sandman extra that i don't really care about to be honest with you but it was 10 bucks so i'll take that and then finally not to leave on a super high note or anything but uh, another lego bionicle we collect all the star wars lego bionicles and build them me and my boys this one was seven bucks it's gin air so it, it's not great i don't love the the oh i didn't take that off don't love the look of that don't think it's like amazing figure it's not as cool as the captain phasma or the k2so one but still i'll take it all right that ends my second video in this uh haul series let me know what you guys think give me a like and subscribe if you're interested and uh you know thanks for for looking out thanks for listening happy new year to everybody if you've got some questions or comments or if i screwed up an author or an artist or i screwed up some information forget about that just let me know and I should have done this earlier, but I'll do it now. I want to give a big shout out. I grabbed a whole bunch of new subscribers watching uh, Alex the Comic Hoarder uh, Wishlist 2018. So a little shout out to Puff Puff Comics, Jason Smith, J. Rod Ham 78, Gomez Comics, Blasted or Stash It, The Great Legend Show, Midwest Comic Man, All About Comics, Long Box Love Affair, Comic Book Aesthet, Drakir's Comic, Pop Dot Comics, Gene Paul Ace Peter, Slay Rich, Kingdom Comics, The Doom, OMG Chris, Pope Grimey. Shout out to all you guys. Thanks for the love. I appreciate it. This is Tacoma Comics saying goodbye. Have a great day.